What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of FTB Inventions. Oh, yeah, guys. So uh, our tree farm is doing well. This is our manual tree farm. We're just using the regular vanilla axes to use the tree capitator mod to chop these trees down. Uh, yeah, we're planting some rubber trees now. We're definitely going to need rubber in order to progress in this mod pack, and I'm looking at progressing today. Uh, all right, so what we did at the end of the last episode is we we're using the grindstone from Applied Energistics 2. We're using this in the wooden crank. We're right-clicking on this thing and turning ores into the dust form, and then we'd have to smelt those in the furnace over here. And yeah, while that does work and is a cheap early game way of doubling your ores, it is very, very tedious. And it requires you to sit there and camp it and right click on things and all of this. And if you right click for too long, you're not paying attention. You break the wooden crank. It's it's good, but it's not anything that I want to have to do longer than I have to do it. <laughs> so uh, we're going to be looking at progressing. So we're getting some rubber trees going over here. In fact, I should probably chop this guy down and then replant this one just so we have more rubber and rubber wood available to us. Yeah, let's go ahead and take all that. Man, we got lots of saplings off that tree. Uh, maybe we should go ahead and plant some more of these around, actually. Uh, there, there. Probably do a couple more, like, right here. And right here. I'm trying to keep these in a grid pattern so they're not too close together. So when I do use the tree capitator mod and I chop down one of these trees, it doesn't take the leaves from all of the surrounding trees. It only takes it from the one, and then I can, you know, tree capitate the next one, right? Um, yeah, people are telling me in the comments that you can plant, like, these oak trees right next to each other saplings in like a big line and then when they all grow you could just chop down one log and it'll take the entire line down my only concern is that we might lose out on some of the saplings and things of that nature i don't know how big of an issue that is right now or how big of an issue that will be in the future but it's just something to be uh concerned about so i just smelted down some raw rubber that we had into rubber bars uh, we're going to be looking at setting up a macerator an electric furnace and a generator i think we do have thermal expansion in this pack. We have RF machines, but I would rather do the IC2 machines since we have Tech Reborn in this mod pack. And that is basically, um, I want to say it's an add-on for IC2. I don't know if it's an add-on or a standalone mod. Anyway, uh, I want to go down the IC2 route, at least for now. We probably will make the thermal expansion machines in the future. But, you know, just to get us started here, we're going to do the IC2 ones. Okay, so we have iron ingots. Uh, we have some tin ingots. We have some copper. Uh, I did do a little bit more mining down in the mine, so we're up to 22 diamonds now. And we got a few other bits and pieces around here, a little bit extra stuff than we did at the end of the last episode, almost two stacks of lapis. Okay. So anyway, uh, our first step is we need to make ourselves a forge hammer. So let's get some sticks here, and we will make that. So a forge hammer is just two sticks and some iron ingots like this. Cool. All right, so in order to make... Um, like copper wires and things like that. We need to turn ingots into plates and then use a cutter on those plates to turn those into the wires. Right. So we need to take our forge hammer and some iron. I think it's three iron ingots or three iron plates. I should say like so and two uh, iron ingots and that'll make ourselves the cutters. So now what we can do is take like our forge hammer plus our copper ingots here and then make like three plates. Cool. We'll take those plates plus the cutters, and there we go. There is six copper wires. We put those with the rubber bars, and there's our insulated copper. Uh, we're also going to want to do that with another uh, iron ingot. So there's an iron plate. Oh, you know what? I'm forgetting. I'm forgetting. We need some redstone in this mix, too. So we'll do two redstone, like so, plus a iron plate, plus these cables, and there's an electronic circuit. We did it. There's our first one. That's very pretty cool. So we're going to need, I think, two or three of those. I can't remember how many we need between the macerator, the uh, electric furnace, and we're also going to want the generator. Um, well, now that I type that, it's added a whole lot of other things with the word generator in there. So the electric furnace does require an iron furnace, which is like five iron plates plus a vanilla furnace, an electronic circuit, two redstone, uh, a macerator right here that is uh, some flint, some diamonds, eight iron plates, yep, and an electronic circuit. So that's a little expensive as well. And then the IC2 generator, wherever that is, let's find it real quick. That is right here. Okay, so we're going to make one of these. So that's an RE battery, rechargeable battery, uh, some tin iron casings, which is a tin plate smashed again with the forge hammer, some redstone, and a tin cable, which we've already seen this process with the copper. All right, so we do need a bit of rubber. 
It's going to be a bit of crafting. A lot of the Forge Hammer using. I'm going to go ahead and get started, guys. It's going to take a minute before we can get this done. I'm going to chop down some trees as well just because these things are fully grown and we probably should be doing this. Uh, anyway, let me go ahead and get some stuff done off camera, guys, and we'll be right back. All right, guys, well, I ended up chopping down all the oak trees and I re replaced them all with the rubber trees because I know we're going to be needing rubber. So anyway, we're going to have plenty of this stuff ready to go. We were running out of room in our little cubby hole, so I started expanding it out just a little bit more. We're going to have to remove all this stuff and, and set them in the wall or I don't know, something like that. But yeah, I definitely felt like we didn't have enough room to set down more machines or I guess some machines. Anyway, uh, we got a generator made, uh, an electric furnace made and a macerator made. We got some achievements for doing this stuff too. So that's pretty cool. Uh, I made up a few of these insulated copper cables enough. If we need to make another circuit or something like that, I'm trying to use these in multiples of six for that reason. So if we ever do upgrade these or we need to make a circuit or whatever, we should always have six on hand. Anyway, that's the idea. So what we need to do is put the generator somewhere, probably in the very back. Yeah. It's not something we really want to look at. And then anywhere along this copper cable, we should be able to put any of these machines we want, like the electric furnace and the macerator. I guess we'll do the macerator right next to here and then the furnace right like that. And those should all get power from this copper cable. We're probably going to want to make an extractor and a metal former and a few other machines later on, but uh, we'll get there eventually. Uh, so for right now, we have a generator here. This can burn any kind of like furnace fuel, like planks or coal or charcoal, etc. Uh, since we have a lot of logs that I've already cut down, I am smelting up a stack of charcoal right now. Let's take half of that. We'll stick this in this generator. This should go ahead and power up uh, all of these other machines over here, which is pretty cool. In fact, I think another thing we can do is we can place redstone right there, and it'll use redstone for power. So if you don't have a generator, if you don't have any furnace burnable fuel, yeah, redstone will keep your IC2 machines powered, so that's pretty awesome. Uh, yeah, and this also has an internal buffer, so... When we use a little bit of power, or if we draw a lot, it'll have a little bit in reserve here. We should also probably look at making ourselves a bat box or some kind of power storage, like a big old battery or something, but we'll do that later. Uh, so for now, now that we have the macerator and the electric furnace online, um, or at least they have power, we can take something like our iron ore, for instance, and stick that right in here. And that should go through the machine and double the ores for us. Now, one advantage of using the thermal expansion machines over uh, the IC2 machines is you do get bonus ores, but that's fine. Like I said, we're going to be working towards the Tech Reborn stuff. Oh, you know what? This is different, isn't it? We're going to have to do the ore washing plant, I think. I don't know if we can smelt these directly. Oh, looks like we can. Okay, so what I was just saying a moment ago is actually incorrect. I forgot about the ore washing plant. Uh, we can set up one of these. We have to put water in there, and it's a little bit expensive. It requires, like, these motors and all of this stuff. And this will actually get us uh, additional bits and pieces, like lead dust and tin dust. And I don't remember what iron gives you, to be honest. But, yeah, there are ways to get those bonus ores, but it's not directly from, like, the pulverizer from thermal expansion. But anyway, uh, we can take these ores that are being doubled and we can smelt these directly. We don't have to worry about waiting on putting them through the washing plant, but the washing plant would be a way to get the additional stuff from them. But yeah, we can get the iron ingots just like this. I don't have to right click on <laughs> the grinder. So yeah, that's really awesome. The only thing is these machines are a little noisy. I could turn off the sound in the configs. That's something I might do. I don't know yet. Uh, but anyway, we have a little bit of power and we have a little bit of machinery set up now. Uh, so I think the next step is I'm going to work on moving this stuff, uh, maybe sitting in the back wall or something, just so we have more room to work with here. And we'll be right back, guys. All right, guys. Well, I went ahead and I rearranged this room a little bit. I put down a floor. We're using the chisel mod. Yeah, this is just all chiseled cobblestone. So I just got like, uh, I think it's large tiles for the border around and we're using damaged cobblestone. Yeah, actually it says on the tool tip, huge cobblestone tiles, damaged cobblestone tiles for the center area. We're using the cobblestone with dent for the walls. It's a connected texture with a little bit of a border around it. And then just aligned cobblestone bricks for the ceiling. So it's just all cobblestone, but looks much better than it did before, right? It's still kind of a plain room. This isn't meant to be anything fantastic. It's just something better than the hole in the wall, right? So uh, right down here, this is our, our mine still. Yep, that's what that's looking like. 
uh, just ended up being right in the corner, so that worked out pretty well. Uh, I did put the chest inside the wall just like so, and they are double chest facing into the wall, so all, uh, they're not taking up as much space anymore. I was thinking we could do like another line of chests here or something, but then we have like one space here and then two spaces here. That just doesn't seem to work right. I don't know what we're going to do as far as that's concerned. Like we need something too wide here. And it might just be we put more chests, you know, double wide right there. Or we could put in some uh, deep storage units or, I don't know, barrels. Or We got many, many different options. But anyway, this is the way we went uh, for the start um, just to get us going here. So I'm in the process of making a metal former. We had to make a toolbox. And in order to do that, we need bronze item casings. You get two of those by using a bronze plate with the forge hammer. Bronze plate, you need a bronze ingot plus the forge hammer. And to get bronze, um, well, the way I did it, yeah, you can do an alloy furnace or you can make the the bronze dust, I think is what it's called. Uh, if you macerate three copper ingots and one tin ingot, then you can craft that in your crafting grid here to get the bronze dust and you can smelt that. That's the way I went. It was kind of a pain to do. We got seven remaining. And I just got done. Oh, I guess we're out of power. Uh-oh. Uh, yeah, I just got done uh, macerating up a bunch of copper. We were running out of this stuff. We need a lot of the copper for... Oh, yeah. We need a lot of the copper for what we're about to do here. I don't know how many of these we need. I think that might be enough right there. Uh, we need the cutters as well. Let's go ahead and cut those down into the wires. Done. Okay, so then we needed, was it iron ingots? Yeah, iron ingots is surrounded by these copper wires to make those things. So we just need three of them. And then this, there's that. There's three. I think we should be good to go to make this. Now, a lot of the IC2 recipes, you can't shift click. Some of them you can, some of them you can't. This one allowed me to. So that's awesome. So now we have a metal former. Uh, I don't think I have any more of the copper wires down here. Let's go ahead and make a new one. We're going to need to power this thing. And with this metal former, this will make it so we no longer have to use the forge hammer and the cutter to make plates and wires and things like that. So that is pretty awesome. Yeah, uh, you can just set this to like rolling, for instance, and put an iron ingot in there. And they'll go ahead and roll it out, and then we'll have an iron plate. So yeah, uh, we still have plenty. Well, we have like nine uses left on the forge hammer. We still have plenty of uses left on the cutter, but it's no longer required. Uh, so the cutter plus the iron plate would do, oh, maybe you can't do it in, in this pack. I think the cutter plus the copper ingots was doing two wires. Uh, if you do the extruding, the wire on a copper ingot, I believe you get three, although the configuration could be changed in this mod pack. It seems like they're adding and taking away recipes depending on whichever mod pack you're on. Yeah, you get three. So it's even better uh, than doing the plate and then using the cutter where you only get two. So yeah, that's pretty awesome. All right, so now that we got the metal former set up, we also got an extractor set up, which is pretty cool. Uh, I forgot to put in the rubber wood. I was going to do that. Uh, the rubber wood will go and extract this out. We'll get the black rubber balls, which is the same thing pretty much as the raw rubber, or I guess the, um, the rubber bars that we were using. So yeah, that's pretty awesome. We'll go ahead and get this cooking up. And the next thing we need to really start looking at is getting more... Power for our generator. Yeah, we're running on coal now. That's not very good. We should probably look at taking some of our oak wood. I moved our wood supply up here. Take some of this. We need to get that all smelted down into charcoal, and then we can run our generator off of that. Uh, so as far as progressing further on in this mod pack, I haven't really looked at what else we should be looking at. Probably we should be trying to get ourselves a mining drill. Uh, that would probably be another good thing so we can use a battery in our inventory and this thing to mine for us uh, Looks like we're gonna need steel. So how do you get steel in this mod pack? We're gonna have to do the railcraft blast furnace kind of looks like it, huh? Uh, so an iron ingot plus coal coke or charcoal or whatever 1200 ticks. Oh, no, this is the immersive engineering one, right? Yeah, cuz we get slag uh, Do we have the railcraft one in here? We might I guess there's also refined iron, so we could look at seeing how we can do that. Looks like uh, there's a blast furnace. I think this might be Tech Reborn. I don't think that's IC2. Okay, so there's that option. Uh, redstone furnace, if we had steel turbine rotors, that seems to be like a popular thing. 
Ah, the induction smelter. Right, this is how I made steel in Infinity Evolved Expert Mode. Just some iron dust, or I guess uh, iron ingots plus pulverized charcoal will do it. Um, It might be better in this pack if we just set up the blast furnace. Yeah, there is the Railcraft version, so we might look at doing this, although we need nether stuff to do that. I'm not sure how this IC2 blast furnace works. I'm probably going to have to do some research and figure it out. Yeah, we get all sorts of crazy stuff. This Tech Reborn, this is like the old style Greg Tech stuff. So there is lots of crazy stuff in here. I'm looking forward to getting through this stuff or at least getting to it and being able to check it out. Uh, we're still going to have to figure out like where we're going to set up our permanent base and how it's all going to be set up and things like that. So lots of good stuff going forward, guys. So let me take a moment here. I'm going to figure out our next step, what we want to do, and we'll be right back. All right, guys. So one of the mods that's in this mod pack, which made it take so long to come out, actually, <laughs> is Equivalent Exchange. Now, I haven't used this mod for a while. I've used mods that are based off it or kind of similar to it, but I haven't used this particular mod in quite some time. Yeah, this has got a minium stone and a philosopher's stone. I don't think there's a recipe for a philosopher's stone in this pack, but we can, in fact, make the minium stone. And this is what, something we can use to change, you know, dirt to sand, or I think you can convert iron to gold, like four to one, and then gold to diamonds kind of a thing. So that's kind of cool. Uh, I don't really know all there is to know about this mod. There is a book, it looks like, uh, but we need, like, the all do all you del. I don't know how to say this, in order to make the book. So what we should do, let's go ahead and make the first little bits and pieces we need here. So we need uh, the base, and we're going to need the glass bell, and then we're going to need this calcinator thing. So this is just stone and iron, and more iron, and more stone, and glass. Okay, so that seems pretty easy. I'm not sure how much iron we have. We have plenty of iron. How about stone? I don't know if we have any stone yet. So we'll go ahead and... Make some stone. <laughs> Why is this stopped? Are we out of power? We're out of power. All right. Uh, yeah, the uh, the charcoal I just got. Let's put that in the generator. That'll keep everything happy over here. All right, so we're going to be smelting down some stone into sand. Uh, oh, that's not right. Some cobblestone into stone. We need to go find some sand so we can make ourselves uh, the, the glass. We could steal some of the sand from here. In fact, this wouldn't be so bad. Just stealing the surface layer of sand. I'll just make this little lake a little bit bigger. All right. That works for me. That doesn't look bad at all. All right. So we got a little bit of sand here. So now we can take the sand and smelt that into glass. So yeah, we should be able to make the little bits and pieces that we need to make. All right. So let's stop this. We'll put the, the sand in its place. Let's make some of these parts. All right. So a calcinator. There's one of those. And then the base. We'll make one of those. Cool. And then finally, the glass bell. We needed seven pieces of glass. And we don't have those just yet. Okay, so we can look at some of these things. I guess we can put the base down. Man, I don't even know where we should be putting these things. Um, Maybe right here for now. We can move these later. So a calcinator. So this is an item that we put in fuel and we burn certain things. And that gives us like dust, I think is how that works. Uh, from my understanding, though, you can only burn things that has a greater than 64 equivalent exchange value or the exchange value. If you hold shift on an item, I'll show you this. Uh, so this is 256, so we should be able to burn iron. All right, so we're going to need, I guess, some of this charcoal. I don't know what we can burn with this, to be honest. Let's just put in, like, eight pieces. Maybe that'll work. All right, so it looks like that is cooking some stuff up. Uh, what does this give us? Is it going to be good stuff? What do we get here? It gives us ash. Uh, that doesn't seem like something that we want. <laughs> um, all right. So what I was looking at for the minium stone, if we click on here, we can get the minium dust. And you get the minium dust by smelting down azure dust plus ash. Oh, maybe you have to smelt down. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. This screen's different, right? So we only got one ash out of here. Maybe it's a random chance. Maybe if we smelt the ash that we get what we're looking for. Uh, let's try smelting this stuff. What does that do for us? Yeah, because if I was looking here, you see this is too tall, but there's only one thing. Oh, you know what? That's a that's the Aludel thing. 
So Ash turns into Ash. That is not what we want. I was sure that's how you got this stuff. At least that's what I was reading on the wiki. This mod's been updated, so it is possible that I don't know what I'm talking about. Very, very likely. So we'll go ahead and make this bell, and we'll stick this on top of here. All right. So now we can see the too tall thing that I was thinking that we should get. Uh, what I wanted to do was to get this verdant dust. And, yeah, we can smelt this into the blue stuff. Trying to get this is the problem. So I'm going to figure out how to do that. I was thinking... Or at least what I read is said that if you burn anything that's greater in EMC value, that it should give you that. Huh. Maybe we need something higher value. And this is 256 each. Maybe we need something lower value. I don't know. I'll play around with this for a little bit, see what I can come up with, and we'll be right back, guys. All right, guys. Well, I think I'm kind of figuring this out. I'm burning through an entire stack of lapis at the moment. <laughs> Probably not the best thing to burn through, but that's what we're doing. Each one of these has an exchange value of 864. Uh, what I was reading on the GitHub wiki, which I think is outdated now, I'm not 100% sure, is that the items have to have more than like 64 EMC in order to burn to get the minium dust. As you can see here, we've gotten some minium dust. In fact, we've gotten five of them and made this alchemonomicon thingy. So if we right click on this, it says no known transmutations, right? So this book doesn't know anything because we haven't transmuted anything. Uh, I was also looking on the wiki. There is a research station, and apparently you can put things in here and it'll research it. And it's talking about it. will put it into a tome, but I assume that's what this is. Maybe it was renamed. I don't know. We're going to figure this out. So we need to make this thing. So we need two pieces of iron. Uh, we need uh, a slab of some description. We will go ahead and make a wooden slab. That should be fine. And then we needed some stuff. I think it was smooth stone. All right, we'll grab some of that as well. Okay, so we should have everything on us. Let's make a research station. There it is. All right, so I have no idea how this thing works, obviously. Let's set it down. Yeah, this is what it looked like on the GitHub description. I think if we put this here and we can put something over here, maybe it'll learn it. Okay, so things are happening. So we're learning how to make oak planks, I guess. Carbon value of 400. I don't know what that means. Okay, so now if we go into this book... Aha. Uh -huh. All right. So it knows about this. So it looks like we have to destroy one item in order for the research book to know how to make it. I assume that's how that works. Uh, maybe we'll try some bronze. Maybe we'll try some copper. Maybe we'll try some tin. Yeah. It seems like getting these materials in there would make sense. Let's take a look at the book, see if it says anything now. So if we look at the stick, look at the, okay. It doesn't really show us anything. It just knows about these. So I don't really know how this is all going to work. Uh, I'll go ahead and research some of these items. I'll play around with this for a little bit. See if I can come up with something on my own. Uh, if you guys know of a good place that's got updated information for this mod, uh, yeah, let me know in the comments down below, definitely. I would like to know everything there is to know about Equivalent Exchange 3. I know it's kind of been updated a little bit. It's, it's new-ish. Uh, it's been around for a while, but yeah, things are definitely way different than what I remember. But anyway, uh, let me go ahead and do some more research with this, and we'll be back, guys. All right, guys. Well, I was spending some time trying to figure out Equivalent Exchange 3. I went to the wiki. I was testing some things out. I was discovering what there is to know about it. Uh, this divining rod apparently has no use, so that's why I haven't really talked about it. It's just there. Uh, but yeah, we need to make ourselves an actual transmutation area. Uh, I had tried this a moment ago, and I tore it down just so I can show you guys how this is done. So yeah, you have to make this ash infused stone. So this is smooth stone plus that ash we were getting uh, put in the Eludel or however this thing is. El yeah, Eludel, I guess. Uh, anyway, you smelt that stuff down, you get this ash infused stone. Then you take a piece of bone meal plus uh, clay and that'll give you chalk. Mm -hmm. And then you can right click in the center here and that'll draw this outline. All right, so we still got plenty of this chalk left. I don't know why we have so many uses. I don't think we're going to be setting up many of these things, but we might in the future. I don't know. Then with the empty hand, you're supposed to shift right click, and then that turns those blocks into slabs, so they look slightly different as well. And then we get this whole cool little interface. So we can right click on here, and then we can put stuff in. Um, you can see down here, energy value. I don't know if there's a way that we can just put energy into this thing, or we have to have the items and we can just convert those into other things. Uh, I do know this table will store like additional uh, values of things. If that makes sense, if you put something in 
like right here that costs a lot and you pull something out that only costs a little bit the result ends up down here in this energy value so it stores it that way but i don't know if there's just ways that we can just dump energy into this thing so for instance if we wanted to put a cooked pork chop there that gives us an energy value of 24. so these are everything that is 24 or less that we can exchange that for i think if we put a stack in there yeah it'll show up more things here because uh it'll use a little bit more of the cooked pork chop uh, we got 480 of them in here uh, looks like we can turn them into themselves if we wanted to but yeah it, you can see it's 480 down here again so the interface is a little buggy if we pull one thing out and we stick it back in here everything's gone until we pull this out and put this back in here but it, you know whatever that's fine there's no problem with that so these are all the things we've learned in this book if we take this book out there's nothing here so you have to learn everything in the book once using that research table like we were doing and then it'll pull information from here and put it here. You can also search, I assume. Well, <laughs> there's two things that say iron, I-R-O-N. We search for iron and then like things disappear. I guess uh, it's there. I, I don't know. There's, there's something weirdness happening here. Uh, <laughs> anyway, yeah, I think we just converted part of this iron ore into my cooked pork chops or my cooked pork chops into that uh there we go there's 20 of them again uh we have minium dust here we can learn this i don't remember if we had this learned or not but yeah this is pretty cool so if we get something that costs a lot we can start you know converting into other items take those items convert into other items and then eventually get the more expensive items out of here so i assume we could do like stacks of cobblestone in there and convert those up and things of that nature i haven't really tried this uh, if we do cobblestone is worth one EMC per we stick that here and we can pull out uh, Charcoal that's cool. We get two charcoal plus 16 remaining cobblestone. So that's pretty awesome. I like that we can get our uh, Our cobblestone back out of there. Um, yeah, I like this. So I'm gonna go ahead and play around with this I'm gonna learn uh, more what there is to learn about it try and learn everything i can about this mod like i said if you guys have information about this that i'm not aware of go ahead and leave me a comment down below uh, i do want to know uh i guess you know everything there is to know about this thing i mean i'm just barely scratching the surface as far as i know there's a lot of other cool stuff in here i saw there were these alchemical chests but apparently these are just large storage they're kind of like you know the iron the gold and the diamond chest kind of a thing um, I don't know if there's any way we can use this mod to collect uh, EMC. I guess that's a different mod, right? From the sun. I don't think that's a part of this. I think this only takes items that you have collected and can convert them into other things of the equivalent value. So that's pretty awesome. All right, guys. Well, I tell you what, I think we're going to go ahead and wrap the episode up here for today. Yep. Kind of derpy, kind of learning things as we go here. But, you know, I, I haven't played with every single mod. There's no way that I can know everything about everything, right? But yeah, that's it for today. Thank you guys for watching. Remember to leave a like on this episode if you liked it. And we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye-bye.